On August 31, 2023, Iranian television aired a surprising report that the government had foiled one of the largest sabotage attempts on their missile program. Explosive devices had been implanted in essential components of ballistic missiles and drones, with the potential to detonate the weapons entirely. These components, typically imported from abroad, are critical in Iran's missile and drone arsenal. The gain from this, the big question is, who stands to gain from this? Who orchestrated this plot? There's one name that immediately comes to mind, and you probably guessed it, especially after the recent violence in Lebanon, where a similar operation occurred just days before. The responsible party remains silent, but the parallels are hard to ignore. The difference this time, Bovrik White. The operation succeeded, but with ordinary communication devices, causing significant damage. Now, imagine if this sabotage attempt with missiles and drones had worked. The devastation could have been unimaginable. In the report, Iran directly accused Israel, specifically the Mossad Israel's Netanyahu refused to comment, leaving us to speculate. The report didn't reveal when these explosive components were discovered or if they were installed on missiles already. But this isn't Iran's first encounter with sabotage from Israel or the US. Iran has faced decades of interference targeting its missile and nuclear programs. From the assassination of their scientists to the 2011 bombing of the Ghadir base, which killed the mastermind of the missile program, Major General Hassan Tehrani Mogaddam, Israel's role remains suspected, despite Iranian denial. Iran's missile program is central to its military defense. It's one of the three pillars of its deterrent strategy, and when Iran fired over 180 missiles in just 30 minutes on October 3rd, the effectiveness of Israeli and American air defenses was put to the test. Despite most being intercepted, some missiles reached their targets, causing significant damage. With tensions escalating, Israel has threatened to retaliate with a stronger strike deep inside Iran. A strike that hasn't happened yet, but speculation is rife. In today's episode, we're diving into the history of Iran's missile program. How did it start? What role does it play in protecting Iran's military and economy? And do these missiles really pose a threat to Israel and the US? Stick around as we explore these questions. Let's rewind to October 2015. Just three months after the signing of the nuclear deal between Iran and the six world powers. America, China, Russia, France, Britain and Germany. Iranian TV aired footage that stunned the world. But first, let's backtrack. At that time, Iran's parliament had finally approved the nuclear deal but there was lingering skepticism, particularly among hardliners who feared it would weaken the military. They doubted the sincerity of American promises and worried about Iran's long-term security. To send a strong message, the Iranian military made two major moves. First, they introduced the EMAD missile, Iran's first medium-range surface-to-surface ballistic missile capable of striking Israel with remarkable accuracy. This missile had four times less margin for error compared to previous ones. Then, they aired the footage. It showed a massive underground tunnel, filled with missiles and launchers, revealing what Iran called missile cities. These are vast underground complexes scattered across the country, housing an arsenal ready to be launched at any moment. The footage sent shockwaves, especially in Israel, where their anti-ballistic missile defense system, the Arrow, would now face a new challenge. Iran had been working on its missile program for decades, not overnight. In fact, Iran's missile journey began before the 1979 revolution. Back then, it had one of the region's most powerful armies and a massive military budget. However, after the revolution, the US imposed an arms embargo, halting the development of Iran's missile capabilities. But things changed during the Iran-Iraq War, 1980-1988. Despite having superior firepower on paper, Iran faced severe challenges, particularly from Iraqi missile strikes. By 1985, Iran had no choice but to seriously invest in building its own missile program. They started by acquiring Scud missiles from Libya and North Korea, which they used in the War of the Cities with Iraq. But Iran's real goal was to develop its own missiles, led by their missile program, Hassan Tehrani Mohaddam. After the war, cooperation with North Korea intensified, resulting in the development of the Shahab ballistic missile series. But by the early 2000s, Iran wasn't satisfied with outdated technology. They needed more accurate, advanced missiles. One major breakthrough came in 2001 with the Fateh 110, a solid fuel missile that was easier to store and launch compared to liquid fuel missiles. This marked the beginning of a new era for Iran's missile capabilities. In 2015, Iran revealed the Sumar missile a precision-guided cruise missile with a range of 2,500 to 3,000 kilometers, putting parts of Europe within its reach for the first time. Cruise missiles are harder to detect and intercept compared to ballistic missiles, making this a significant development. Iran's missile arsenal continued to grow, 
with new missile types and capabilities being introduced almost yearly. Today, Iran's missile program is vast, with underground missile cities across the country. Some estimates suggest every Iranian province has at least one of these cities, ready to launch missiles at a moment's notice. Despite economic challenges, Iran's missile program remains a top priority, with an annual budget of over a quarter billion euros. The second important stop was in. In 2023, Iran made a bold announcement. They claim to have developed the Fatah al fahd sonic missile. This missile is a game-changer for them, boasting speeds of 13 to 15 times the speed of sound and a range of 1,400 kilometers, and it's reportedly capable of carrying nuclear warheads. Now, let's break down what a sonic missile actually is. These weapons can launch at speeds exceeding five times the speed of sound. They can be glide vehicles or missiles, flying at low altitudes to dodge radar. What's crucial here is their ability to evade advanced air defense systems. As of now, only three countries have this technology, Russia, China, and the United States, with Russia and China leading the pack. But hold on. There's a significant caveat. Iran's claims about the Fatah al fahd missile haven't been verified. They even said they successfully used it in an attack against Israel, asserting that it bypassed their air defenses. Sounds impressive, right? But has Iran's missile program really progressed smoothly for over 30 years? The answer is a resounding no. Take, for instance, the years following the Iraq invasion. The US government initiated secret intelligence operations aimed at undermining Iran's missile and nuclear programs. The CIA and NSA explored ways to disrupt Iranian factories and supply chains. Early efforts were largely unsuccessful. Iran had built networks to obtain parts through black markets and various intermediaries, but that didn't stop the CIA. They started subtly altering key missile components, like changing designs on critical valves or modifying engine parts. This covert operation significantly delayed Iran's missile development. Now, let's tackle the burning question. Do Iranian missiles genuinely threaten Israel? Can Israel maintain its defenses indefinitely? The reality is, defense often costs more than offense. For example, each Israeli interceptor missile costs significantly more than the missiles they're designed to intercept. Iran's recent missile attacks were estimated to cost around $200 million, while the cost for Israel to intercept them was around half a billion dollars. And guess what? The US covers about 90% of those defense costs. So do these Iranian missiles pose a real threat? It hinges on various factors, including the element of surprise and the explosive power of the warheads. We also need to discuss what's known as missile economics. It's not just about having the best missiles, you need a substantial stockpile and the ability to replenish it during a conflict. Reports indicate Israel is already facing ammunition shortages. If a full-scale war were to erupt, Israel's technological edge may not be enough in a prolonged conflict. Meanwhile, Iran has low-cost weapons and could threaten global trade by closing the Strait of Hormuz. And don't forget about their accelerating nuclear ambitions. Israel's air defense systems will need to be constantly replenished and won't be fully operational for regional protection until at least 2025. And while closing the Strait of Hormuz poses risks for Iran, it's a strategy that could be employed. So with the current Israeli government's aggressive stance, anything is possible. I know I've thrown a lot of information at you, but we had to cover the complexities of the Iranian missile program. Now, I want to hear from you. Do you think Iran's last missile strike was truly successful? Has Israel retaliated yet? Share your thoughts in the comments below. If you enjoyed this episode, give it a thumbs up, share it, and don't forget to subscribe for more in-depth discussions. And spread the word. Your friends might find this topic just as intriguing. Thanks for watching.